Today we'll look into the setup I have for the MOBA minion spawning mechanic. You can see that I have 6 ally minions spawn and that they move towards the target enemy minion. Once the enemy minion is defeated, it will try to look and move towards the closest minion. When there are no minions in range, it will then walk towards the tier 1 enemy turret. I also managed to set up so that every 3 waves, a super minion will spawn. If you guys just want the project, you can go to my Patreon and get it there alongside the 2 MOBA series project files. With that being said, let's dive right into the video. So this is how I have my scene set up. 3 red cubes as our enemy minion, and a tall red one for being our enemy turret. I also have a minion spawner game object, where we'll spawn our ally minions. All this has is a minion spawner script attached to it which we'll get into later. For the turret, I have a tag on it called turret, with a box collider, a nav mesh agent, and a rigid body. You can copy the settings right here, but I don't think I really changed anything. Moving on to our minions, we'll have the same components but this time changing the tag to enemy minion. For the minion spawner, it's just an empty game object with a script on it. For the minion and super minion prefabs, we'll add the same components as we did for the enemy minion, but now we'll attach a script to it called minion AI. The super minion is the exact same, but the only thing I changed is the scale, which is set to 2, just so that it's noticeable in the game scene. Also make sure that you have the navigation plugin installed. You can easily find it by going to the Unity registry window. Making sure you have the ground or floor game object selected, and on the navigation obsolete, Go to bake and it should make the map blue, which means those will be the places your minions can walk on. We're first going to look at the minion spawner script found in the minion spawner game object. In Visual Studio, these are the variables we'll need. You can go ahead and pause to copy these. I've added comments to each one to explain what their purpose is. In the start method, I made a start a coroutine which will spawn the minions. Looking into the ion numerator, We'll first increment the wave count and check if it spawned enough waves to spawn the super minion. If it is, we'll spawn the regular minions first and then spawn the super minion. We'll then add a spawn interval in between so that there's a delay between each minion spawn. If not, we'll go to the else statement in which we'll just call the method spawn regular minion. You can pause and copy these lines of code. In the spawn regular minion, we'll just get the random spawn point in our list, but in this case we'll only have one and have our minion spawn in the spawn point. We'll get its movement speed and change its value to the movement speed we'll declared in the script. The same logic will apply to the super minion. You can see that it's pretty much the same but with a little tweak to the names. You can now pause and copy these lines of code. That covers the script for the minion spawner. Back in Unity, these are the settings I have for the script. Both the minion and super minion move speed is set to 5. Then have the prefab of the super minion and minion attached to the right slot as well as the spawn points. The spawn interval I have is set to 20. The minions per wave will be 6, and the waves until super minion is 3. We'll then have the delay between minion spawns set to 1. You can obviously change these settings to how you like, although I would say leave the delay between minions variable the same. Now onto our AI script which is found on both the minion and super minion prefab. In this script, you'll need to make sure that you're using unityengine.ai at the top to be able to access the nav mesh components. These are the components we'll need. You can go ahead and pause to copy these in. For the start method, we'll have the agent equal to the nav mesh agent and we'll call a function called find and set target. The find and set target will just be getting the game object with the tag enemy and checking if they are within the ally aggro range. If they are, they will become the target and if not, we'll look for the tag turret and go towards that instead. Scrolling back up to the update method, it's simply just checking the last time we switched to a target and if they are enemies within the range. It's also calculating that once an ally minion is moving towards a target, it won't directly stay on top of it. Instead, it will stay at a stopping distance that you can declare on how far you want them to be from the enemy. For the check and switch targets, we're getting the enemy minion tag and checking if the current target is for example dead or destroyed, we'll then look for another target with the enemy minion tag. We'll keep repeating the process until there is none in range. If there isn't any in range, we'll then go to the enemy tower. You can go ahead and add these two transform methods in here. Copy these transforms and all it does is that it calculates which of the game object is closer and which is within the range of the minion. This is for the transform get closest object and this is for the transform get closest object in radius. After that's done, you're pretty much set to have the basic functional minion spawn working. Back in Unity, just make sure the enemy tag and turret matches to what you have in the script. 
You can also adjust the stopping distance, aggro range, and target switch interval to what you feel like. Personally, I would leave target switch interval, but the stopping distance and aggro range you can play around. When I let this scene play out, it will spawn the 6 ally minions that will target the first enemy minion. I'll pause it and delete the minion from the game scene. And now when I play it again, you can see that the minion will try to find the nearest enemy and move towards that. I'll do the same again and you can kind of get the gist of how it's meant to work. Since this is our third minion wave, our super minion will spawn at the very end once the first 6 regular minions have spawned. After when there are no enemy minions, they will all shift towards the enemy tower. Clearly you can see there are bugs when it gets too cluttered and other minions lose track of who to target, but we can fix that another time. For now, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. That is pretty much all for this video. If you do want the project, you can go to the description, subscribe to my Patreon, and also get the rest of the mobile project files. If you have any questions or suggestions, or just want to join my community, my Discord will also be in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!